The views expressed on this show by guests and the host on issues outside of the 9-11 controlled demolition evidence are the opinions of those individuals alone and do not necessarily reflect those of our contestant engineers from 9-11 Truth. Welcome to 9-11 Freefall. I'm the host, Andy Steele. Well, we have an exciting event coming up, and for that reason, we are bringing in the big guns this week. We're joined by Richard Gage and Kelly David. Richard Gage AIA is a San Francisco Bay Area architect of 30 years, a member of the American Institute of Architects, and he is the founder and president of Architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth, which of course represents more than 3,000 architects and engineers who have signed our petition demanding a new investigation of the destruction of all three World Trade Center skyscrapers on 9-11. I mean, Richard really needs no introduction. He's been all over the world giving presentations. He does the weekly webinar. He provides information and inspiration to the growing number of supporters that have been waking up more and more every day. And, of course, he's joined by Kelly David, who is our Chief Operating Officer here at AE 911 Truth. Prior to working for AE, she organized the day-to-day operations of several businesses in New York where she grew up. And she doesn't come on this show a lot, folks, because she prefers to stay behind the scenes. But she's an amazingly talented manager, strong leader, inspiration to the whole staff. And we absolutely wouldn't be where we are now without her. So it's exciting to have her on to talk about this event coming up. Guys, Welcome to 9-11 Freefall. Thank you, Thank you Andy. Andy. <laughs> We're happy to be here. Absolutely. So, and I'm honored to be here with my COO, Kelly, who does all the work behind the scenes at AE 9 Truth. I mean, you wouldn't believe what she accomplishes. So just to have her here on the show, I'm just tickled pink. Absolutely. So our audience is going to be very interested to hear about what's coming up on this year's anniversary. Richard, tell us all about it. Well, what are we going to do for September 11th is a question we always ask ourselves throughout the summer and sometimes even into the fall. Uh, and this year, it was, uh, it, was, it was just obvious. We had to have a, a, a conference online, first of all, because of this COVID thing that we're all facing and that you can't even book a venue these days. Uh, but it, look what it enabled us to do, Andy. We, we've got speakers from around the world that, uh, and I mean some, and speakers in the, in the 9-11 truth movement that we have not heard from for years and years and years. We're talking pioneers in the 9-11 truth movement that we're going to be bringing to everybody for this conference on September 11th, which is Friday, September 12th, which is Saturday, and September 13th, which is Sunday. And um, that's what we're here to talk about. And uh, I'm excited. Are you, Kelly? I am very excited. (laughs) There's a lot to talk about today. Right. And we're going to be going over that speaker's list later on in this program. So you are going to want to stay tuned. But as Richard mentioned, this is a tremendous opportunity. And I really want to turn to Kelly for this question, because I know you've worked very hard on this. Obviously, as Richard alluded to, the world situation, it's a factor trying to plan anything in the next couple of months. As the venues may or may not be open. We don't know what's going to be going on. Uh, so we have gone to this online format. But in your view, how is this form of presentation of advantage for AE 911 Truth, but also by extension the 911 Truth movement as a whole? I actually think it's a really good opportunity. Um, at first, it seemed uh, that it would be difficult for us in order to do what we always do. We're either in New York or we're in D.C. or we're doing some action or putting on some event. And this year, we had no choice but to have an online event. But because of that, 
we were able to get this opportunity to have speakers, as Richard mentioned, from all over the world come together for this. And the other great advantage to this is that anyone can view this. In the past, they had to either be near wherever we decided to have the event for the year, typically New York or D.C., or they'd have to travel in order to attend the event. So with this opportunity, we are able to get more viewers. All they have to do is come to our website, and they'll be able to view the conference, and they can share the link with their friends and try to get as many people as possible to watch this. So I think despite the situation that's going on in the world right now, we made the best of it, and I think it turned out a lot better than all of us uh, had hoped for. So it it is extremely exciting. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, think about the opportunity here now for some outreach from our supporters. You have family members who may have been hearing you talk about Building 7 off and on for years, never really looked into it. What a good chance to send them a link, have a watch party. Uh, maybe you have a local uh, truth group that you've been uh, doing work with. You can have a watch party right in somebody's house, get a pizza, and it'll just be another uh, chance for you to be able to see the great information that's going to be presented, not just on the stuff that we talk about every week here at AE911 Truth, the science of the destruction of the three towers that fell in New York, but people are going to be talking about the bigger picture. We actually have a whole day that's labeled as the big picture. I believe it's on uh, Sunday, and we got some great guests lined up there. So let me turn to Richard, and uh, let's go through this lineup. Uh, beginning on Friday, we're going to have an introduction from yourself. You want to talk about that for a moment, Richard? Yeah, we're going to go back in history on Friday and and talk about you know why, how the 9-11 truth movement itself kind of came about, and then you know, we're the Johnny come lately to the 9-11 truth movement. It was like 2006 uh, when I was hit over the head by a two by four uh, by David Ray Griffin on the radio. And it just threw me for a loop. Uh, my whole world perspective changed. And we, we founded Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth. We went through some early growing pains. I was working full time as an architect in those early years, and 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 trying to uh, do a world tour uh, in, in 2008 the first time. It was very, very difficult for us. So we founded then the formal organization as a membership organization, and we got members to support us, which enabled me to then go full-time. We're going to talk about that whole story all the way uh, up to the present. You know, we started with one architect and engineer for 9-11 Truth, and, and now we have 3,000 uh, plus. Uh, so uh, th that, that story is going to kind of be a great story for a lot of people who don't know the kind of the backstory, right? And then um, we have a surprise uh, little film we're going to show, and we're very excited about that, uh, about uh, our history. And, uh, and, and that's uh, 6 p.m. Eastern on September 11th, Friday. And then we jump into Matt Campbell, uh, who is a UK 9-11 uh, 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 family member who lost his brother in the tower. He, We are supporting him now in a major uh, legal action in the UK, which gives us the opportunity to get our technical evidence into the international uh, justice uh, system. And so Nick Stanage is the actual barrister, is what they call him in, in England, and he will be on with us. We're so excited. And Kelly and I, Kelly, tell, tell, tell your impression about Nick Stanage. This is an amazing story. Nick Stanage is just not your average barrister slash lawyer, in my opinion. If you look up the work that he currently does and has done in the past, he is more than just a barrister. He works for human rights. And if you look at his biography, most of it is about the cases that he worked on where he's 
working for the people who are less fortunate or in a difficult position and need help. And he has done some human rights activism in Palestine to help the Palestinians. Uh, he is just, I don't, know how else to describe him other than uh, just a superb human being and he's also a very talented barrister and but I he's believe, brilliant right I mean yeah he's, and he's taken on the government in most of these cases which is what this is really all about right right that's what he basically specializes in and uh, you know to be able to talk to him he's just easy to work with and we couldn't have found a better barrister for this case. So it it really, to me, it makes a huge difference in how this legal battle will pan out because we have Nick Sandage working on this. And um, that, to me, made, I mean, the inquest itself uh, going about this was uh, always a good idea. But w once I started speaking with Nick, and working with him and reading about him, I realized that there is no one better for this position. He is exceptional. And, and all that happens at 645 Eastern Time on Friday, September 11th. Then at 730, we go into the main piece of ammo that Matt is going to use in his inquest, and that's the request for correction, which is a 100-page document that our uh, our... Uh, director, director of strategy. There we go. Go ahead and say it. <laughs> director, the longest name. Yeah, it is a long title. Director of strategy and development, Ted Walter. It's long enough for me anyway, but Ted does a fantastic <laughs> job. And he put this uh, document together and it challenges NIST. It, it, it basically proves that their whole report is fraud. And uh, along with Tony Zambodi, uh, a technical support on that document and Mick Harrison legal support, they will be talking about this uh, request for correction, which is really a demand for correction and forces them, NIST, uh, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, to completely uh, revise their entire theory of how they thought Building 7 came down. Uh, and so this is going to be an, an awesome uh, look into this important legal action. Uh, but then, uh, and speaking of legal actions, at 8.15 that night, this Eastern, um, the Mick and Dave and my Swinkle and, and Mick Harrison will be going into the additional efforts that they have from the lawyers committee for nine 11 inquiry. So we're working very closely, as you know, with the lawyers and several legal actions, including the FBI lawsuit, the grand jury, uh, petition. So, uh, they'll be updating you on all of that stuff. And that completes, uh, uh justice Friday. So that's Friday night, 6 p.m. Eastern to 9 p.m. Eastern. And you don't want to talk about Science Saturday, do you, Andy? Well, that's what we base a lot of our content here on the show. And, of course, that's what we focus on here at AE 9-11 Truth. So very exciting lineup we got Friday, but it doesn't end because it goes on to the next day. This is an all-weekend thing, folks. So Science Saturday, Richard, please, 3 o'clock, begin. Okay, if you're going to twist my arm, um, <laughs> 3 p.m., uh, Saturday, September 12th, 3 p.m. Eastern, uh, we start with none other than the famous director of Loose Change 9-11, Dylan Avery. And he's going to t take us in depth into the film that he's making about Professor Leroy Halsey and his finite element analysis exploration of four years through the University of Alaska at Fairbanks into Building 7. And that movie is called, what's it called again, Kelly? Seven. Ah, yeah. And so uh, you're, you're working mostly on that film. What's it about? It's mostly about Building 7, and we're just taking a, a different look on it than previous 9-11 documentaries, and it's shot in a different way. We hired an amazing director of photography named Ryan O'Hara, and he did a fantastic job. So the film is mostly about Building 7 and the study that Professor Leroy Halsey worked on and putting all of that together to make this 
film to try to not just inspire the movement, but to wake up regular people to this overwhelming evidence. And, you know, the, the evidence was overwhelming before the study was completed. But now that we have this four-year study to go along with it, it just kind of brings like the cherry on the top to this overall story about Building 7. So it's uh, it has been a lot of fun, uh, a lot of work, but a lot of fun to work on. And I'm very proud of it. And Dylan Avery is a fantastic director. I mean, he you introduced him as the director of Loose Change, but he also wrote it and produced it. And he's also made other films. Uh, like Black and Blue, which has won at least uh, one film festival award that I'm aware of. So Dylan has been working on, you know, 9-11 and films in general, directing and, and producing since he started Loose Change back in 2003. So this is the first time since Loose Change that he is working on a film exclusively about 9-11. And I think it will be pretty interesting to see Dylan Avery, who started out Loose Chain, who basically woke up a lot of the movement. I mean, so many people say, well, I watched Loose Chain, and then I woke up. And Vanity Fair... There was like 20 million of them, wasn't there? I I think it's more like in the billions. Um, oh all, all of all of them combined, and Vanity oh. Fair called it the the first internet blockbuster, and it just took off. And so, you know, he kind of started a lot of us out on this journey and waking people up. And he has worked on so many other films since then, but none of them have been exclusively focused on nine eleven. And now here he is, all these years later. That's another thing that people don't realize that when he first made Loose Change, he was 19 years old. And now here he is, older, wiser, more experienced, and he's making this film about Building 7, going back to 9-11 for the first time since Loose Change. So to me, I, I really think that is, it's just such a nice connection, uh, how he you know, started a a lot of people in the movement out. And now here we are, he's making this film about building seven and the science, breaking it down to our evidence. And I am really proud of it. And I think it's going to do fantastic. And then, um, of course, we're not just going to leave it up to a film. We're going to bring Leroy Halsey uh, along with Dylan to talk about uh, his role in this film, kind of the backstory from Professor Halsey, the chairperson of the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. He's now retired, uh, but uh, he has uh, quite a story to to share. And then uh, the the next hour at 4 p.m. Eastern, we're going into uh, the global failures of uh, the Twin Towers and Building 7. Roland Angle will be giving the results from that study of four years, and I'll be going into some of the evidence just to remind everybody, and for those that are new, because we're trying to get new people here, Andy, we got to have not just the choir, as we've heard um, in the 9-11 Truth Movement, but everybody's got to be sending this link out to everybody they know in order to get them to watch, you know, at least uh, one night of this three-night series. Uh, So I'll be going into the World Trade Center Twin Towers evidence with the high extreme temperatures and the explosiveness, and that'll complement Roland Angle, civil engineers, uh, d- delving into the, the details of what Professor Holsey found. And then um, we come back out on a Saturday night for, for me, is what is the, the whole reason for this conference. <laughs> but as if all of that is not enough, we've got the three pioneers of the 9-11 truth movement David Ray Griffin in the flesh on Saturday night, 5 p.m. Eastern. Stephen Jones uh, with him, uh, nuclear physicist, formerly from Brigham Young University, who discovered 
the nanothermite chips in, in, the, in the dust, along with Niels Harrett, who will also be there. And, uh, and Jones discovered the, uh, the, the uh, previously molten iron microspheres, billions of them, in all the World Trade Center dust samples, along with the U.S. Geological Survey and so forth. And um, Niels Harrett pioneered this uh, 25-page peer-reviewed p- paper, which is uncontested. Uh, and then David Ray Griffin, who, of course, who's written now uh, 14 books on the subject of 9-11 truth and who is considered to be the godfather. <laughs> is that what you call him, Kelly? <laughs> yeah, the godfather of the 9-11 truth movement. He's amazing. And I wouldn't be here. If it weren't for him, because I heard him uh, interviewed by Bonnie Faulkner on KPFA's Guns and Butter program in the, here in the San Francisco Bay Area. So I'm, uh, I'm overwhelmed and humbled and honored to have these three giants uh, among us. Uh, how are you feeling about that one, Kelly? I, I don't even remember the last time David Ray Griffin has given a presentation and to have all three of them together, I think it, it's just going to be amazing. And again, this goes back to what we said earlier. We wouldn't have been able to get all of this done if we were not doing this online. So now we have David Ray Griffin, Stephen Jones, Neil Tarrant is in Denmark, and we're able to bring them all together so that they can speak together and uh, to me, this is uh, this is like making history. Uh, yeah. I'm- well, you call him the Godfather of nine eleven truth, so I'm going to say to the audience, this is a panel you cannot refuse. <laughs> I would agree. No. <laughs> and Absolutely. The they're, what are they going to be talking about? They're they're going to be sharing their reflections of their early work in the nine eleven truth movement, the importance, how they got into it. Uh, why they put so many years of their of their labor, uh, what what they're doing now, and what's maybe some advice for us it, who are still working daily in the 9/11 Truth Movement? What what can we? What should we be doing? When can we anticipate a a breakthrough so that we can get this major domino to fall, which uh, we all believe. Uh, here at AE 9-11 Truth, that if we can get 9-11, uh, get, get people like woken up to it, 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 it'll just start all these other dominoes falling. We think this is the granddaddy that'll knock them all over. What do you guys think? I absolutely think so. Now, it doesn't just end because we're going to be going off into Big Picture Sunday, beginning at 6 o'clock. Richard, what's happening at 6 o'clock on Sunday? Well, we're going back across the Atlantic Ocean yet again to Daniel Ganser in Switzerland. Uh, He's an educator, PhD professor, and author. He'll be focusing on 9-11 false flags and wars on terror that have happened uh, since the major granddaddy false flag uh, of 9-11. And so he's going to also stress why 9-11 is so important because it spawned all of these, um, the global war on terror, which we've lost uh, $6.5 trillion on, and our freedoms with the, Na- the Patriot Act, the Military Commissions Act, and the National Defense Authorization Act of 2012, uh, just stripped us of, 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 our, of our civil liberties. Uh, and people don't even know that today, but it could be used against us. Uh, and he's going to go into that with some really important slides, some new new material he says he's got, too. We had him on the show earlier this year, a very fascinating guy, a lot of research he has done. So I know he is going to be bringing his A-game to this presentation. Our listeners are going to want to see this. Uh, then we got 7 o'clock. What's going on there? Oh, you don't want to know about this guy. Uh, this guy is going to knock everybody over. From the East Coast, John Whitehead of the Rutherford Institute. He's a, a constitutional attorney who has helped all kinds of people who have been abused by the system. His book, A Government of Wolves, focuses on the abuse that's happened since 9-11, and again, as a result of 9-11. And he's going to focus on why exposing 9-11 can turn things around for us. 
Uh, he is an expert uh, also on surveillance, uh, the surveillance state and the police state that have happened since 9-11. So I am really excited uh, to to bring him aboard. Um, I would call this the keynote speech of the of the whole conference. But then again, that leaves James Corbett out. And <laughs> James Corbett is coming at 8 p.m. from not just across the ocean, but around the world from Japan, uh, where he lives with his family. And he reports, and everybody knows James Corbett. If you don't, be sure to Google it, James Corbett. Um, he has written on all kinds of subjects, including the truth about 9-11. And uh, uh, I just have to, for this one, this one only, I'm going to give you the actual title of his talk. The Library of Alexandria is on fire. Internet censorship from 9-11 to today. And of course, this subject affects all of us because so many 9-11 videos, including many of our own, uh, have been taken down by YouTube. They've actually, what is the policy, uh, you guys, that that, uh, that YouTube announced, or was it Twitter? Basically, there is an all-out assault right now on anything that challenges official stories, including September 11th. So this is definitely something that you are going to want to hear because we got to start strategizing. we got to start going to alternative sites like BitChute, I find to be a good one. Uh, James Corbett is going to be talking about all of that on top of all of these great presentations over three days uh if the world wasn't locked down right now i'd be telling your audience don't make plans during those three days but i think that's pretty safe to say that not many people are going out right now so make sure you are in front of your computer that you're awake and ready to go and watch and share it and share it and kelly i gotta ask you with all of these great guests that are coming to our audience, how are they going to be able to watch it, and how much is this going to cost our supporters to view it? This is not going to cost anyone anything. This is a free online conference, and it's going to be extremely easily accessible. It will be on the homepage of our website, so there will be uh, right at the top a slide showing the presentation, the conference. You just Click on that. It'll take you right to a web page that's devoted to this. Plus, we will also be informing the supporters who are signed up to get our emails. And if you're not signed up to get our emails, please go to our website and just sign up on the home page. All you have to do is type in your email address, and that way you can stay up to date on everything that we are doing. So between the emails that we'll be sending out, the fact that it'll be on the home page, it'll be easy for everyone to view. And again, please share that link to that web page to anyone you feel needs to hear this, someone that would be interested, someone that may be interested, someone that might not be interested, but maybe this will be the thing that makes them realize that this is something that they really should be interested in and care about. So it's a completely free online conference. All right, folks, circle the date. It's not a hard one to remember, especially for this audience. September 11th, Friday, it all begins, and it goes on to the 12th and the 13th as well. You can go to ae911truth.org. A lot of content here. I mean, we spent a whole half hour just talking about it in a very general sense. You'll be learning more about it at our site. We'll be sending out bulletins as well. As Kelly said, tell your friends. And uh, I just want to thank you guys. First, Richard, for starting the organization, for presenting this opportunity for so many people to make the world a better place. And Kelly, for all the work that you do, getting us where we need to be to overtake this tremendous lie. We couldn't be doing this without you guys or any members of our staff right now. Amazing, talented group of people that we have. And of course, our supporters out there. Yeah, so. thank you. Thank you, Andy. And of course, thank you for coming on 9-11 Freefall today. You're very Thanks. welcome. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it was awesome to be here with you. See everybody at the conference. Yeah, see you there. This program is on every Thursday night on No Lies Radio at 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Pacific, and every other Sunday night on BBS Radio at 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific. You can also keep track of the archives by going to 911freefall.com. Zadie Steele, say have a great week. Good luck.